What the heck is this? Hello? Where did this come from? What, what are these things? Headphones? Noise canceling Sony headphones? Why would someone drop these on my doorstep? Well, I may as well use these and see if they're any good. Ah, uh, yes, the Sony WH-1000X Mark IVs. Many people consider these to be the king of noise-canceling headphones, but are they really the king? Well, that's what I am here to figure out. These headphones retail for $350 normally, but you can get them for $270 during the holiday season and as of right now. So for the past week, I've sat back, relaxed, and listened to some tunes on these wonderful, wonderful headphones. These headphones are made mostly of plastic, which is actually a good thing, because this isn't a cheap feeling plastic, it's a nice soft touch surface, which is smooth um, and it's matte, it doesn't attract any fingerprints or oils. To adjust the headphones on the top, there's a metal slider that feels sturdy and is a pleasure to use. There's some nice cushioning up here on the top, and the ear pad cushions are perfect. They're not too firm, but they're not too flat either. The right, just the right amount of cushioning there. On the bottom of the headphones are where all of the buttons and ports are located. So on the left over here, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone port for wired connections. There's no weird proprietary port here, such as Lightning on the AirPods Max or the 2.5 millimeter port on the Bose 700s. So it should be easy finding a replacement should you lose or damage the cable that comes with these headphones. The included cable is actually really nice because there is this texture along the cable that prevents it from tangling. So if you can see here, if you, there's this little, little lines in here. So you just connect this to um, a phone. It's got a little L plug here so it can plug in directly to the top of a phone or media player or whatever and then this part just plugs into the headphone. And again, it's super easy to replace this. You can go to any Target or Walmart and buy another one of these cables for $5. Then also on the left side of the headphone, there are the two physical buttons. So this one is the power button. You simply hold it down to turn the headphones off or hold it down to turn them on when they're in an off state. And then the custom button. Now this button can either be used to turn on the ambient noise or noise cancellation, or it can be used to bring up an assistant and it can do different things if you just tap it or double tap it or hold it down. You can configure that within the app. On the right ear cup, you simply have a USB Type-C port, which can be used to fast charge the headphone. So Sony claims you can reclaim five hours of battery life with only 10 minutes of charging, provided that you use a fast charging brick. Now, don't make the mistake that these little holes are USB Type-C ports. They're not. They, they look almost the exact same size. We have this USB Type-C cable over here. It almost fits in there. It, it is honestly kind of a misleading size. This is just for noise cancellation. They have the microphones in here so that it knows what to cancel out. On both sides, you got the LeBron accent, but yeah, no, it's on the bottom. It's not on the sides. The right ear cup is also where the touch controls are housed. You can swipe up or down to change the volume, up or down, or you can swipe left or right to change your tracks. Double tapping will play or pause the tracks while holding it down will also bring up the assistant. It works pretty well and better than you would have expected a touch setup to be. One interesting thing to note is that if you have long hair like me, sometimes the hair can get in the way of the touchpad surface, so you need to move it out of the way in order to adjust your tracks, which isn't a huge deal at all, but it's just something that wouldn't really occur if you just had physical buttons you would press. Just something to note. 
There were reports with the XM3s that the touchpad was not responding or was giving incorrect inputs during cold weather outside. So since it's the end of December, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to use these outside. And I have used these for an extensive amount of time while shoveling, walking, doing whatever outside. So I will go out there and explain if I've had the same issues or not. Okay, so I was shuffling out here for a good hour and a, hour and a half yesterday, and I didn't have any touchpad problems until about 40 minutes in. I could still play, pause, move tracks back and forth, adjust the volume, whatever, but the transparency mode went on, and I was like, okay, maybe it'll turn back off, and then another five minutes later, it went back on, so the music just stopped, I had to wait for it to stop the transparency and then go back to the song so that happened about five times before I was just like you know what no turn off the touch controls so it is still very much an issue in the cold this stuff still worked but the transparency mode it's just for whatever reason was acting up so how comfortable are they to wear extremely they're super light and they weigh around 250 grams and the combination of the light plastic and the comfortable padding make these a joy to use for an extended period of time just like all headphones though the ear pads do get a bit sweaty if you're using them indoors or during a warm climate but enough with the design how do you set these things up initially well it's easy to set these headphones up for the first time thankfully all you need to do is just simply turn on your phone's Bluetooth, connect them just like any other Bluetooth device. But these headphones also support Android's fast pair. So if you turn on the headphones for the first time and have your phone near, your phone has Bluetooth on, a screen will come up asking you if you want to pair them. Simply all you need to do then is tap pair and the headphones will pair. You don't even need to go into the settings. You can also tap your phone to the NFC spot on the left ear cup to pair the headphones as well. I also noticed one unique little trick with this NFC pad over here. So even if you already have the device paired, but Bluetooth isn't on. So right now with this device, Bluetooth is off. If you just tap it to the back, a NFC, vibrates your phone obviously. The headphones turn on. It says connected. And then it's playing the song right now. It's not playing this song, it's playing this. But it instantly turns on the headphones and plays whatever song was recently playing, which is crazy. So not only can you use this feature to pair the two devices, you can also just use it to play songs if you really just wanna play something real quick. But of course, we have to get to the most important part of headphones, which is the sound. So I tested these headphones on a variety of tracks, both local lossless FLAC files and lossy stream music from Napster and YouTube. Listening to songs from the stock sound configuration, at first I wasn't too impressed with the sound. Song sounded a bit muddy with too much added bass, but the great thing is that these headphones have a wonderful equalizer within the app which some headphones in this price range, like the Bose 700s, don't even include. There are quite a few pre-picked settings to choose from, but you can also completely customize the sound for yourself, with five different dials ranging from the lows to the highs. So the setting that I used for most of the time after setting them up was the bright setting, as for me it sounded far better than all of the rest settings, to my ears at least. I don't listen to songs with a ton of bass in them, so having an emphasis on the higher tones was great. It was great having the option to be able to turn it to that. Of course, you can determine what setting, at the end of the day, is best for you. Previously, you could not use high quality Kodaks with the equalizer on the MX3s, but you can do so on the MX4s. So that might be a reason for many to pick up this model over the older model if you want to really fine tune your music. Be aware, however, that the equalizer only works over Bluetooth, not wired. So if you use these with a cable, you will have to use an external equalizer or not use one at all. As for Bluetooth codecs, this year's model does not support Aptex or Aptex HD due to a change in the chipset that they're using this year. But it does support Sony's LDAC, which is better anyway, so you're not losing out on anything. Regardless of whether you use it with an iPhone, with AAC, or an Android phone with LDAC, you'll be getting the best possible sound quality over Bluetooth. 
So speaking of the new chipset, Sony has included a new DSEE Extreme mode, which is supposed to intelligently make lossy compressed music files sound more like a high quality version. So I tried turning it on and I tried listening to stream songs with it on and then with it off to see if I could find a difference between the two. And I really couldn't determine a difference between them, but perhaps your results will vary. It's just nice to have this feature regardless as many people just use streaming as their primary way of listening to music. And as for connection, I've had no problems over Bluetooth. It's been an extremely stable connection, even over LDAC. Overall, I would say the sound quality is good. It's nice that there's so much customization for people so you can really determine what sounds best to you. One thing to note is that when wearing these, it does make your ears feel sort of like they're stuck in a vacuum, even when you have the noise cancellation turned off. And since this is my first pair of noise canceling over the ear headphones, it has felt very strange to me. So just be aware of that. Even when you don't have it turned on and you put these headphones over your ears, it still cancels out a lot of the noise passively and it does feel like a vacuum. So be aware. Okay, so this is a test of the mic from the XM4s. This should give you a good understanding of how these might sound if you're on a Zoom call or during a phone call with friends or family, or if you're recording a video like this from the headphone mic, not from the computer. This is from the headphones. So you should be able to understand how these sound different when compared to the other mic I've been using for this video, which is my Audio-Technica mic over here. So tell me how they sound. This is from the exact same Chromebook, same position. I just changed the mic to the built-in mic on the Chromebook. So this is how it would sound if you're just using these as a headset. You're using like a computer as the mic or something instead of the headphones. So there's that sample. And then here's the same thing again, just with an actual somewhat professional mic that you might use if you're using a Zoom call or something. So comparatively, looking at the three of them, these definitely sound the worst, but if you're just walking around outside or, you know, you just need to use it for a simple call, I mean, they work. Noise canceling. Of course, noise canceling. That's kind of half the point of these headphones, isn't it? It can be described in one word. Phenomenal. It blocks out fan or heater noises, distant voices, and outside music. It even blocks out the winter winds during a blizzard, which recently happened. I haven't had the opportunity to try these, obviously, in like a large city environment. That's not where I live or on a plane due to the current pandemic. But I'm sure that these would work perfectly for both situations. You hear this loud heater over here? I don't anymore. These headphones also offer an ambient mode with a whopping 20 dial slider that helps customize how much of the outside world you want to hear. So speaking of modes, there's also a transparency mode where you can put your hand on the ear cup to pause your songs, which allows you to hear people or announcements from the outside world if you don't want to take off your headphones really quick. This again could be extremely useful in an airport or a train station when you're actually traveling. So maybe not great for the current situation, but it's a nice feature to have. Can I just talk about this case real quick? Cause I've never heard anyone else talk about this case. This case is great. I, the texture is really nice. It's not too basic, but it's not too fancy. There aren't a bunch of logos on it. It's just, it's pretty much a pure black case, but it's fabric. You got this gold accent, or not gold, bronze accent, which is the accent of the headphones. A nice little zipper, right? And then the zipper, the end of the zipper can tuck into these little sides, either here or this side. It's got this nice little thing that you can carry it by just for your finger if you want, or you can attach it to like a backpack or something like that. And then the back, there's this little mesh area that you can put stuff in. And it doesn't even come with anything to put in here because you can put the, the charger and cable in side uh, the case itself in this little corner the way that they fold up is really really nice too but they know that you're going to carry around a bunch of extra stuff earbuds or cables so they have this little thing you can put stuff in it's just really really nice i would argue that overall these headphones are the best 
bang for your buck that you can get, especially being only $270 for the holiday season, so Black Friday, Cyber Monday, even now in at the, the beginning of January, they're still $270. I would highly recommend these for the plethora of useful features, good sound quality, and the comfortable design that comes with it. I can recommend it to almost anyone. It's no wonder that these are often hailed as the king of noise canceling headphones because that's truly what they are. There's really nothing here that's bad about these. Almost everything about these is perfect for what they are trying to be. If you look at smartphones, for example, there's a certain point where paying a little bit more doesn't really get you that much. Like I would argue that going from a $200 smartphone to a $400 smartphone, you're getting so much more with that price jump, so it's absolutely worth it. But going from a $400 smartphone to you know an $800, $900 smartphone isn't worth it because you're not getting as much with it. I would say the same th for the headphones. If you're buying a $100 pair of headphones, I would say it's absolutely worth it to just pay another $100 and get something like this. Um, but I don't think that you really need to pay $200, $300 more for something, say, the AirPods Max or even the Bose 700s, which cost $400. You can get these for like $130 less. I would say you don't really need to jump up that much in price. But that's about all I have for these things. I mean, this this is really satisfying to do. I don't know why. It just really is. But if you have any questions about these headphones whatsoever, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. But I think that that is it for now. So thank you all so much for tuning in to Tea Time. And I'll see you guys later.